Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to the preview for the 2024 Monaco Grand Prix. Yes, it is Monaco Grand Prix weekend already. Now look, I know this is far from the best place for overtaking, understatement of the year, and yes, qualifying is likely to be the best session of the whole weekend. But for me, and many of you as well, I'm sure, there is just something really special about Monaco, and I absolutely love watching these drivers at one with their cars, threading them flat out through the barriers. That part of the weekend is always incredible to watch, and that's what makes Monaco for me. But enough of all that waffle, let's get on with the preview, starting as we always do with some track stats. So last weekend, F1 was at Imola where Max Verstappen took the win by just under a second from a late charging Lando Norris. What a tense finish that was, but now it is on to Monaco for round eight of the 2024 season. A lap of the famous Circuit de Monaco is the shortest of the year at 3.337 kilometers long. That's just over two miles, if that's your thing. And is made up of 19 corners with 78 laps scheduled for the race on Sunday. And the race at record is a 112.909, which was set by Lewis Hamilton in 2021. As already mentioned, overtaking will be very tough and there will be just the one DRS zone in use across the weekend to try and help with that. And that is down the start, finish straight and ends just before the first corner. I doubt it will make much difference, although if we are going to see any moves at all, that is one spot. But drivers do sometimes go side by side up the hill after turn one. Turn five at Mirabeau is maybe one of the better spots, perhaps the hairpin two. And the Nouvelle chicane following a blast through the tunnel could present the odd opportunity. But again, for the third time already and probably not the last time in this preview, do not not expect a hat full of overtakes on Sunday. And last year, Max Verstappen took the win in a race of mixed conditions with Fernando Alonso in P2. Many thought he could have won that one. We'll never know, of course. And Esteban Ocon took a surprise third place finish and rounded out the podium. Here's a stat for you. Ayrton Senna has the most wins at the circuit with six. Graham Hill and Michael Schumacher each have five and Alain Prost four. But Sterling Moss, Jackie Stewart, Nicky, Ros Nicky Rosberg. <laughs> Who, that's Nicky Rosberg. <laughs> I'm going to try and read that again. But Sterling Moss, Jackie Stewart, Nico Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton have all won the Monaco Grand Prix three times. And this weekend, Max Verstappen could join that list as he goes for win number three around the famous streets on Sunday. Hmm, that's interesting. Three, that's also the same number of dry tyre compounds available to race weekend. Well then, that can mean only one thing. Oh yes, it is tyre talk time once again, folks. Hang on to your hats. That's acting. The compounds available for this one then are the softest in the Pirelli range. No great surprise there. And so they are the hard C3, the medium C4 and the soft C5. The Monaco circuit is not very demanding on tyres. The forces put on there are actually some of the lowest of the season. And frankly, degradation is barely a concern. However, although the softest tyres are good for traction, mechanical grip is limited, which can cause some sliding. And that could result in surface graining, which will be a concern for teams. Track evolution is high, so should improve as the weekend goes on, but the track is open to normal traffic every evening, and that means it's actually difficult for rubber to build up on the racing line, which also means the surface could actually be more slippery. Something else that could make the track more slippery is rain, and the last two F1 races around Monaco have featured rain at some stage during the race. As I sit here and record this, so Wednesday afternoon, forecasts say there is a chance of rain for Saturday, but Sunday looks to stay dry. And the graphic on screen now is the most up-to-date forecast at the time of editing, which, if you're interested, is Thursday morning. Anyway, track position is absolutely critical at Monaco and with overtaking extremely difficult strategy will play even more of a key role on Sunday. It is expected teams will target a one stopper running as long as possible to try and benefit from a potential safety car or even a red flag, which in the case of the safety car would obviously minimize the time lost in the pit lane for the drivers. And last year's winning strategy was a one-stop, which was affected by the rain. Max Verstappen starting on the medium tyres before switching to the intermediates on lap 55 and ran those to the end of the race. Had the rain not come, though, he would probably have still made just the one stop. And the last couple of things worth a quick mention on strategy. Last year's total pit lane lost time was largely between 24 and 26 seconds. And the chances of seeing a safety car are high due to the proximity of the barriers with eight of the last 10 races at the circuit featuring at least one full safety car period, including a race start behind a safety car in 2016. So in terms of race incidents, you could say seven out of 10. And your schedule for this one is exactly the same as last weekend. So FP1 gets the event started on Friday at 12.30 p.m. BST. FP2 starting later that same afternoon at 4 p.m. Saturday's action starts with FP3, which gets going at 11.30 a.m. with qualifying underway from 3 p.m. And it is lights out for the race on Sunday at 2 p.m. And once again, that is in UK time. Now, before I get on to my predictions, let's have a quick run through some of the news stories and talking points that have been doing the rounds since Imola. 
So, first up, as has become tradition at this point, McLaren will run a special livery for this weekend's Monaco Grand Prix. The team says the livery, inspired by his race helmet, is a tribute to Ayrton Senna and remembers his life and impact on McLaren and Formula 1 30 years on from his passing. They also confirm the team will wear Senna-inspired kit for the weekend, with Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri wearing bespoke overalls. Zach Brown said that Senna remains revered and respected as F1's greatest icon and his impact on McLaren is enormous, not only through his racing record, but also presence within the team and calls it an honour to race for Senna in his most successful circuit in his green, yellow and blue colours. I like it and I think it will look great out on trap. What I'm going to say is that how it looks doesn't actually really bother me because the thing I love is the meaning behind it and that is the tribute to Senna. So well done McLaren. But let me know what you make of the livery in the comment section down below. What would you give it out of 10? One being absolutely horrific and 10 being the greatest thing you've ever seen. Oh, and by the way, Williams will be running a slight tweak to their livery this weekend. The Duracell bunny featuring on the engine cover of the car too. And I quote, showcase the world famous battery brand's latest innovation in battery power. Elsewhere, Andretti Cadillac has confirmed the signing of former F1 Chief Technical Officer Pat Simmons. Simmons played a big role in helping with the 2022 and 2026 technical regulations and was set to leave his position with F1 anyway, but it has now emerged that he is off to Andretti and will work from the team's recently opened Silverstone base once he has completed a period of gardening leave. A statement from Andretti said that they couldn't be more excited to welcome Simmons to Andretti and added that his keen understanding of aerodynamics, vehicle dynamics and Formula 1 power units will be instrumental as they continue to build a competitive team. The statement went on to say that his expertise has been pivotal in shaping the narrative of Formula 1 and his vote of confidence in joining Andretti's efforts speaks volumes. And a talking point for this weekend is Max Verstappen trying to take yet another F1 record. The Dutchman has started on pole position at every race since Abu Dhabi last year. That's eight in a row and equals a record held by Ayrton Senna, which was set back in 1989. If Verstappen takes pole position on Saturday, that will obviously make it nine in a row for the world champion and take him to the top of that list ahead of Senna on eight and seven, actually, followed by Alan Prost, Michael Schumacher and Lewis Hamilton, who all also achieved seven on the bounce previously. It would also put him top of the list for most consecutive poles from the start of a season. Right then, shall we get on with these predictions? I think we should, but remember, do not take these too seriously. Just a little bit of fun. But if you do disagree with my picks, then you can let me know yours in the comment section down below. And last time, yeah, not great. Although not that far off how things have been going for me lately. I was right on Verstappen winning and Mercedes is the fourth best finishing team. And they even get half a point for Norris on the podium, but in the wrong spot. So two and a half points out of seven. Yeah, great stuff, Sean. This week, honestly, I'm torn. McLaren are clearly in the mix now and the pace isn't as we saw last season at times track specific, at least it doesn't seem that way and Ferrari are also never that far away either. It really could go either way and that result from qualifying could pretty much decide the race results on Sunday. It is also worth noting that setups won't be as varied as they were at, for example, Imola, with teams really having little option but to go as high downforce as possible. There will be variations though of course but high downforce will be king. Monaco is also a place where the driver can make all the difference in a tight fight, so I cannot wait for quali on Saturday. It should be close. With all of that said, and as close as it has been at times in quali this season, Max Verstappen has still always found a way to take P1 on a Saturday. After all, and as already mentioned, he's taken every pole this year and he's on a run of eight poles in a row. So while I'm not ruling anybody out completely, of course I'm not, I will still go with a Verstappen pole for that very reason I just stated. And because it's Monaco, I'm going to have to go with him for the win as well. Then again, only three of the last seven races at Monaco have been won by the pole sitter. That does include 2021 where Leclerc didn't even start the race though. But even if we remove that year, it's still three from six. So it's potentially not as foregone a conclusion as people keep saying, you know, pole always wins. That's not the case. But if we do have a straightforward drama-free race, I still think it will be pole to win for whoever gets P1 in quali. But anyway, a little bit off track there. I'm going with Verstappen for pole and the win. Lando Norris for P2. And even though I'm a Ferrari fan and I really want to see Leclerc or Sainz up there somewhere, I'm actually going to go with Piastri in P3 for a double McLaren podium. As always, though, it's important to say that it could easily be any two drivers from McLaren, Ferrari and Perez who join Verstappen up there. As for best of the rest, I'll go with Mercedes again as the fourth best finishing team. But I do expect Aston Martin to be closer than they were at Imola, especially if Alonso's back in the mix. And my bold picks for this weekend are double points for RB, a perfectly timed safety car helps Nico Hulkenberg take a top six finish, and yeah, both Saubers make Q2 on Saturday. Why not? That is it then for the Monaco Grand Prix preview, but don't forget you can let me know your thoughts and your predictions ahead of the weekend in the comments section down below, and don't forget to let me know what you think of McLaren's Senna livery.
Now, I will be back soon with some more content and I will be live shortly after the race on Sunday with the usual reaction stream. In the meantime, though, if you did enjoy this one, then please do leave a like as it really does help give the channel a little bit of a boost and consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos or streams. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 Word. And until next time, goodbye.